In this video we're going to look at some quick worked examples of solving simple quadratic equations by factoring. Let's start off with a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx is equal to zero. An example might be x squared plus 2x is equal to zero. If we have a quadratic equation in this form we set one side equal to zero. So in this particular case I can see that the right hand side is set to zero. On the left, we look to factor out the common factor. The common factor of x squared plus 2x is x. I take that out, open up the bracket, and say to myself, what do I need to multiply x by to get x squared? The answer is x. What do I need to multiply x by to get plus 2x? The answer is plus 2. Alternatively, you could say to yourself, what is x squared divided by x? The answer is x. And what is positive 2x divided by x? The answer is going to be plus 2. If we look now, we've got x multiplied by x plus 2 is equal to 0. Either 1 or both of these must be equal to 0. So for example, if we had now 5 times by 0, that would be equal to 0. If we had 0 times by 3, that would be equal to 0. So we can see that one of these is going to have to be 0. So we set the right hand side to 0 and we can go ahead and say that either x is equal to 0, which gives us one solution, or x plus 2 is equal to 0, which means that x would be equal to minus 2. It's simply now the same value, but the opposite sign. So if x plus 2 is equal to 0, x is going to be equal to minus 2. Let's have a look at another one. Let's say we've got x squared minus 3x, and that's equal to 0. We factor out the x, so we'll have x, and then we'll have x minus 3. So we've got x multiplied by x minus 3 is equal to 0. So either one or both of these must be equal to 0. So we can say that x is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0, which means that x would be equal to 3. So these are two possible solutions to the quadratic equation. If we had now x squared is equal to 5x, the temptation here is to divide both sides by x. If we do that, we're going to lose a solution. So what we do is subtract the 5x from both sides. x squared minus 5x is equal to 0. Taking out the x, we'll have x, and then we'll have x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we can see that x would be equal to 0, or x minus 5 is equal to 0, which gives us that x would be positive 5. And we found our two solutions. Let's do another one. Let's say we've got 2x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. Our common factor again is x. That's going to leave me now 2x minus 3. So we've got x multiplied by 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. That means either x is equal to 0 or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. If that's the case, x is going to be equal to 3 over 2. If you're unsure on how to find the value, you can simply set 2x minus 3 equal to 0. You can add 3 to both sides, so 2x is equal to 3, and then divide both sides by 2, and x is going to give us 3 over 2. We're simply solving that linear equation. So we've got now here two possible values, x is 0, or x is going to be 3 over 2. Let's do now 4x squared plus 5x is equal to 0. So a common factor of x, so we can take the x out, that's going to leave me 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. So we've got x is equal to 0, or we've got 4x plus 5 is equal to 0, which means that x will be equal to minus 5 over 4. So all we're doing is simply solving now quadratic equations in the form ax squared plus bx is equal to 0, by factoring into a single bracket and then solving. We're now going to look at some examples where we have a constant, and these are now in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. This time we need to factor into double brackets. An example might be x squared minus x minus six is equal to zero. When we have this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, we look for two numbers that multiply to give c, and they add to give b. 
So we're looking for two numbers, but multiply to give minus 6 and add to give minus 1. So this is my C term and this is my B term. So if we look at minus 6, we can see that this would be 1 times by 6 or 2 times by 3. We need to make minus 1. So we can see that it's going to be the 2 and the 3. We now need to decide which is which. What I'm going to do is open up a set of brackets and then set these now equal to 0. As before, if we're solving this quadratic equation, we need the right-hand side set to 0. We put an x in each bracket, and now I have to decide which is going to be the positive and the negative. We can see that we've got minus 1, so the coefficient of the term in x is minus 1, so I'm going to have x minus 3 and x plus 2. That tells me that either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. If that's the case, x would be equal to 3 or x would be equal to minus 2. So again, we've set the right-hand side to 0. we found two numbers that multiply to give the c term, which is minus 6, and add to give the b term, which is minus 1. We've looked at minus 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. We can see these differ by 1, so we simply put these in the brackets and either x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. We go ahead and solve. So let's do another one. Let's say we had x squared plus 7x plus 10. This is in the form now ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to set this equal to 0. So we want two numbers that multiply to give the c term. The c term is the value without an x. So we want two numbers that multiply to give positive 10 and add to give positive 7. So if we look at that, we've got now 10. Well, we could have 1 times by 10 or 2 times by 5. If this value here is positive, the two values are either going to both be negative or both be positive. We can see that it's the 5 and the 2 as they add to give 7. So x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5 is equal to 0. So from here, we simply switch the signs. So x would be equal to minus 2 or x would be equal now to minus 5. And they are the two possible solutions for x. OK, let's do another one. Let's say we've got x squared plus x is equal to 20. This time we need to rearrange the quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So what I'm going to do is set this equal to 0 by subtracting the 20 from both sides. So x squared plus x minus 20 is going to be equal to 0. So ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. We need two numbers that multiply to give minus 20 and add to give positive 1. So if we look, we could do 1 times 20, 2 times by 10, 4 times by 5. They are all of the factors of 20. If we look, we can see there's a difference of 1, so it's going to be 4 and 5. I'm going to have x plus 5, as we got a positive value, and then x minus 4 is equal to 0. So we can see that x will either be minus 5 or x will be equal to positive 4. And they are the two possible solutions for x. Now, if you're unsure of whether you've got this right, you could just check by expanding it out. So if we've got x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 4, if we expand this, x times by x is x squared. x times by minus 4 is minus 4x. 5 times by x, both positive, will give us plus 5x. And then we've got plus 5 and minus 4, which is minus 20. Tidying the terms in the middle, we're going to have x squared plus x minus 20. So if you're unsure, all you need to do is simply expand it out and you'll see that that works. OK, so they are some basic examples. We put this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. We factor by finding two numbers that multiply to give c and add to give b. We put those in brackets and we simply say one or both have to be equal to 0 and we solve by writing the opposite value to the sign.